Hello, welcome back to the class. Uh, this is a support and to your learning in the classroom. And we were talking about the note taking and we reached the biology. And I am doing now the biology revision, a fast revision for you. So last session we talked about uh, the cell structure and also the living organisms and what is their characteristics and now today I want to talk about diffusion and osmosis but first I have to tell you something about the solutions and the different solutions and what they are and how you prepare a solution maybe it is a little bit related to the physics but you need to know that in order to know about diffusion and osmosis too when you make a solution what do we need and what is a solution indeed? So a solution is something which is dissolved in a solvent. The solvent something is something that can dissolve something in the cell. It depends, it can be alcohol, it can be water, it can be anything. And the solute or the something that can be dissolved in it can be something like salt, sugar, or something else. So we have, in order to make a solution, we need these materials. First, you need to prepare a container. Okay, container. To put the things in. And what materials do you need? You need solute. This example of the solute is water. Oh, sorry, it can be sugar. Or it can be salt. The simplest ones that is quite familiar to you. And then we have a solvent. The solvent can be, for example, water, the simplest and most known solvent. <clears throat> okay? So, when you add, so if you put, you have, uh, you put the solvent and put it inside a container like this. There are, for example, water, and this is the water molecules I show by. Um, Okay, I show by blue color. These are the water particles. Okay, I show by blue color, round circle. And then I show the sugar or salt. Okay, salt. The salt, I show the salt particles by using this black marker. So when you mix it, stir it properly and until it reaches to an equilibrium everywhere in the solution. So the particles inside the solvent, they reach to an equilibrium. Okay, means that they are evenly uh, distributed everywhere in the solution. That's time you have a salt solution. The result of putting salt, which is a solvent, into water is a solution called salt solution. Or maybe brine water. Brine water. Okay? So it's a kind of a solution. The number of the particles are very important when you are talking about the concentration and what type of the solution you have. Okay? So you compare how many solute particles you have and how many solution part uh, solvent particles you have. I mean here we have how many salt particles dissolve in how many of water particles, okay? If, if number of the solute particles, if solute particles equals to solvent particle we have what type of the solutions we have isotonic isotonic solution okay if we have if solvent particles more than solvent then we have hypertonic 
solution or we call it as concentrated concentrated solution if solvent particles is less than sorry uh, if solute x got a solid solute particles is less than solution particle the type of the solution that we have is a dilute solution or hypo hypotonic solution dilute or hypotonic solution we know to, we need to know them because after that we need to talk about osmosis and diffusion and the reaction of these different types of the cell when you place them inside each of these solution it just came into my mind to talk about something else that um, a temperature has effect in dissolving the things if the, the higher the temperature the particles I mean the solute particles can be dissolved faster into the solution the lower the temperature of course they slowly can be distributed into the solution into the solvent and make a solution so if you want to speed up the uh, uh, dissolving the matters into the solution you have to warm it you have you can try it you can try at home you can add sugar into hot water and you can add a cube of sugar into the cold water and see which one this cube of the sugar can be dissolved faster you will see that the hot in the hot water dissolving that thing is much more easier Another thing that has effect on uh, speeding up this reaction and this uh, dissol dissolving the matters is uh, to stir it. If you stir the uh, solute inside the uh, solvent, of course, you speed up the contact um, time and contact of the matters with the solution. So, of course, the dissolving of the matters will be uh, faster when you dis when you agitate the environment when you are uh, stirring it up. Okay. So let me let me write everything on the board for you. As you can see, I have listed down those things that you need to do in order to increase the speed of the uh, dissolving of the material into the solvent. For example, imagine if you put a cube of sugar inside, of, inside your tea, it's a hot tea, okay, and you have cold water here too, and the size of the both cube of the sugars are the same, okay? So it is cold and this is hot. Of course, the dissolving of the uh, sugar here would be faster compared to this one. This is a slower, okay? So in order to speed up the reaction, you need to heat the solvent, which is water, okay? The next thing is that stirring up the solute in the solvent. If you put sugar in and you help it to dissolve by using a teaspoon and you stir it, dip, 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 this will be because you give more contact to the particles between the solvent particles and the solute particles, they more frequently attack and touch each other, in more in contact with each other. So the it is real, this, this, this will be dissolved faster into the water. And the next one is that uh, you, can, you can choose a smaller sizes of the solute in order to make the uh, reaction happen faster. If you have sugar, the powder, the crushed sugar, and put it inside the water, compared to the cube of the sugar, in which one do you think the, the sugar will be dissolved faster? Of course, in this one, because 
the particles of the sugar, they have more contact area with to the um, water particles compared to this one. You see, the contact area to the water particles here is more compared to here. So each particles have a contact with direct contact with the particles and they collide together. So it is dissolved faster, but here it takes time so that the water particles, they can also react with the particles of the sugar inside the cube. So it takes longer time, okay? <clears throat> So we talk about diffusion. Diffusion, what is the diffusion? Diffusion, as I have written here, is the movement of the particles from where they are high in the number of in the number of the particles, of the, the, no, uh, the number of the solutes, and to the lower concentration of the solute particle. So from where they are, this is the movement of the particles or the solute from where they are higher to where they are lower in concentration or in the number. Okay, so this is diffusion. In a diffusion, we do not need energy from respiration. So, which is something that happens randomly, is a random movement of the particles. It doesn't need any energy. Okay? And, <clears throat> and it is down the concentration gradient. And it happens and it continues until the, the solute particles at the both, uh, and the both sides, they reach to an equilibrium. I mean, they become, both of them, they become equal in the number. The thing that, so I can just write down here that in diffusion, this is the movement of particles, movement of particles of the solute. from high to low concentration. The next thing, it doesn't need, it doesn't need energy from respiration. The next thing is that it doesn't need osmotic membrane or that's PPM partially permeable membrane okay another thing is that um, yeah it continues until it, they uh, the, uh, the particles in the both side they reach to equilibrium it continues until uh, equilibrium is reached. Equilibrium is reached. Okay. What does that mean? I will show you on the diagram. So let me just have a look at this. I show the sugar by using the blue color and the salt by using the black color. In this container, the both um, side of it, we place sugar. We have sugar particles. Here, 9% is the concentration. And here, it is more concentrated. The sugar, sugar is 19%. And here, we have salt particles or solutes. And which is the concentration, concentration at this part of the container is 12%. And here, it is 4%. Here it is more dilute, here it's more concentrated. So what happens to the particle here? If we have this kind of the imbalance in the container, after a while, if you just leave that container alone and hold the thing, this is what will happen. Um, the sugar will travel, the sugar particles will travel from, from where they are more in concentration to where they are less in concentration. So this is the direction of the movement of the particles from 90 person to 9 person until they become, they reach to an equilibrium, okay? Maybe eight and eight or six and six, okay? And the, here we have uh, salt. The salt 
particles. They move from where more, more concentrated to where there are less in concentration. So from 12 person to 12 person. So the direction of the movement will be from left to the right. And this happens, I mean, they move and move and move, going from the left to the right until on the both sides we have same number of the particles. Okay? Perhaps at this side they move and move and move the particles until this part becomes 8% in concentration of the soul and here also 8%. So on the both side we have the same concentration or the equilibrium is reached in the container uh, regarding the salt particles or the solute. So for the sugar also it will be the same. For example, they move from here to here until the both of the size, the, big, the concentration of the sugar becomes 14 percent. 14 I mean, from 100, if the number of the water particles inside is 100, 14 particles belong. 14 particles sugar are located inside the 100 molecules of the water. And this one means that eight particles of the salt inside 100 particles of the water. So this means concentration. So eight person and eight person, 14 person, 14 person. It means that um, this shifting of the molecules from the higher concentration to lower concentration continues until an equilibrium is reached. For example, this is how you you smell the perfume from fall or some smells from afar. Um, I spray perfume. This is a perfume. I sprayed at this side of the room. Now, the number of the particles of the perfume at this part of the room is much more than the other part of the room. But later on, the person who is sitting there will actually smell the perfume and we should say oh who used the perfume who sprayed the perfume I said how did you know that because the particles of the perfume are attached to the air particles and traveled through the diffusion to the reach to the other part of the room okay so that how you smell things from afar because the number of the particles of the perfume at this part of the room is much more higher than the other part. Like this. These are the perfume, par perfume particles. And this side of the room doesn't have any. So it's they start moving, distributing to the other part of the room until evenly they are distributed everywhere. Okay? So all around the room will have we receive the particles of the perfume. Exactly the same as the diffusion that happens when you dissolve a cube of the sugar inside the water. The cube of the sugar is made of a lot of small particles of the sugar. Okay? They are all located in this part of the container and the water. Here we have lots of sugar, but here we don't have. So what is happening here? The sugar particles starts moving and traveling to the rest part of the part of the container and the water until the number of the particles of the sugar is evenly distributed everywhere. Like this. That's why your tea, if you leave your tea and the, with the sugar inside in a, on the table and you leave, when you come back, you find that it is sweetened, it is sweet, it is no more bitter, it is sweet. But you say, I didn't, I didn't stir it, I didn't do anything, I just put the sugar in, I just left. Yes, of course, you put it inside, but through the diffusion, the, what the molecules have gradually, slowly traveled all the way around the container and sweetened your tea. And this process is called as diffusion. It doesn't need partially permeable membrane, it doesn't need any energy to apply, doesn't need energy from respiration, and also 
it happens just like this, maybe randomly, and is the movement of the particles from one place there are more to the other place that are less in the number. Okay? Another that I can say diffusion happens in the uh, liquid or the gaseous as uh, environment. And so it means in the air or in the water, it can happen. But when we talk about osmosis, we are talking about a phenomenon that only happens inside a water. That's the movement of the water molecule from where they are more to where they are less in concentration. So osmosis is a movement of the water molecule and the diffusion is a movement of the solvent. Osmosis happens in the water and the liquid, but diffusion happens in the gas or liquid. Okay? So the meaning of the definition of osmosis is a net movement of the water molecules, water molecules, okay? Water particles, they move, not the solid, the solute particles. So that's the movement of the water molecules from a region of a region that it is low concentration of the solute particles. Or, of course, when the solute are particles are low, we have a lot of water content, so, or high water concentration, or we call it as higher water potential, okay? To a region that has higher solute, higher number of the solute or concentration, or we call it as lower water concentration. When you have high number of the particles, of course, the number of the water molecule will drop. So, of course, we have lower water concentration or lower water potential. Through a partially permeable membrane or PPM, if you remember. So, in the osmosis, it's very important in the definition, we have partially permeable membrane. It doesn't have a color. There is a PPM. The example I set is a, a cell membrane, is a PPM. Our egg, egg, the transparent membrane, you can use as a PPM, partially permeable membrane. If you want to do any experiment, you can use that one. It's a very interesting experiment that comes out of that. You can use that one to do a lot of experiments, okay? So we have a partially permeable membrane here in the osmosis. We have two different kind of the solvent here, okay? Uh, for example, this is a container. These two parts of the sol solution inside the container, they are separated by using PPM membrane, okay? And here we have two types of solution. In one side, we have, uh, we have more water. In one side, we have less water, okay? like this. If there is no solute inside still because the uh, osmosis is a movement of the water molecule, so let's see if we have this side of the membrane, PPM, more water means more particles of water, and here we have less particles of water, what will happen? Of course, the water is stopped moving and passing through the PPM and going into the other part of the container through the PPM membrane, the osmosis membrane, and adding to the, uh, this side, adding water particles to this side, and reducing the number of the particles from this side. Until this is re the result after, for example, one or two hour, if you come and check the container, this is what you see at the both side, we have the same number of the particles of water or the same level of the water. So this one goes down, this one comes up on, until they become equal in level or they reach an equilibrium. And if there is any a solvent also inside, that would be the same, okay? For example, this may happen, this may be the condition, but if the both side only water, this happens. But if I add concentrated solution of salt here, 
So it's a pure water here at this side, and here we have a concentrated salt solution. I use a show salt particles by using a black color. So we have a lot of salt particles here, a little amount of water. What do you think will happen now? We said that's the movement of the water molecules from where it is higher to where it is lower in concentration. In which part we have more water? The level of water is here is higher, but it is more solute than uh, water. So the, here it is very concentrated the solution, and here is pure, is dilute. So the water will move from here to here in a reverse reaction. So from the right to the left, until the concentration of the both side becomes the same. I mean, we have the same number of the water molecule at this side and at this side. So the water travels through the osmosis membrane until the both side of the membrane, uh, the solution at the both side of the membrane, they reach to equilibrium uh, regarding to the number of the water molecules. So here, if the water molecules is less than here, so the water molecules, doesn't matter if they're all the uh, height of the or the level of the water is lower than this board but still this moves from the right to the left to help to, do, to make this one more dilute and this one so that the concentration on the both sides uh, of the water becomes the same okay the water content look at this shape okay another example this is a kind of tube and inside this tube for example, here, at here, we put partially permeable membranes. So what here, of course, if you put uh, what, uh, any solution inside, there will be uh, osmosis happening, okay? Because we have partially permeable membrane. If there was no partial permeable membrane, it was diffusion. But now, we fill this part on the left side of the PPM, with the solution that contains water, okay, and a lot of sugar. So there are sugar particles. This is sugar particle. So our solute here is sugar. You see, we have lots of sugar particles here. And at this side, we put a dilute sugar solution, for example, these are the number of the sugar particles at this side. So we have more water particles here compared to here. So now, if I want to show the direction of the movement of the water particles because of the osmosis, how should I show that? Is it from right to left or it is from left to right and why? We said, okay, we reviewed the definition again. The definition of osmosis, it is osmosis, it's not diffusion. So. I, at the beginning, I know that because we have PPM, a membrane, osmotic, osmotic membrane here, okay? So, this is osmosis. Based on the, defu uh, based, based on the definition, we say that, it, that the, the um, osmosis is the net movement of the water, water particles from where they are high in number to where they are less in number. So, the number of the water particles here is more than here. This is more filled up with the sugar particles and we have less number of the water between the sugar particles but here there are a lot of water particles and some sugar particles in this is dilute at this part and at this part it is concentrated concentrated sugar solution so now the movement of the particles in this uh, actually happens from right to the left okay for example, the sugar here can be 5% and here can be 15% the concentration. Here is higher. So we have, we have more water here. Here we have more water. Less solute because of the concentration. Here we have more solute and less water. Once we define that in which of the places the water content 
is higher and where is less so we can understand from where to where we have to put the arrow to show the direction of the movement of the water particles so it is from right to the left because here we have more water molecules oh, here we have less water molecules okay so i hope that you have understood the osmosis and diffusion here at this chapter so till next time i say goodbye